Hey guys, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 bringing to you a very special bonus video for the Batman Beyond review series. And this video is going to be a audio commentary video where we'll be talking about Return of the Joker, which came out 20 years ago on October 19th in 2000. And we are joined by our very own good pal, Geeker Beyond himself, Chris. Heisenberg. <laughs> Heisenberg. Well, before we get started, we're just going to be talking a little bit about how we first heard about Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. So, Chris, how did you first hear about Batman Beyond Return of the Joker? Uh, well, I didn't hear about it. I just, one day I was in my local shop and it was there. I think it was Wolves. Okay. Many moons ago. And it was Batman of the Future. <laughs> oh, in the yeah. UK. That was what they called it in the UK, didn't they? Yeah. Batman of the Future. Um, I remember in secondary school, there used to be a little website through Kids WB, and they had a Batman Beyond mini site, and it used to have this big long intro, just like the TV show, music and everything, and at the very end I remember hearing Mark Hamill's classic Joker laugh and I thought what's going on here and then what you see here is the green face of the Joker and Batman standing on the top and it says coming soon Batman Beyond Return of the Joker and I remember just losing my mind thinking oh my god we're actually getting a Batman Beyond animated movie this is so cool and the cool thing about it was I don't know if you remember this or not. Did they ever show any designs of what the Joker was going to look like in the movie? Or was it all kept hush-hush? Because I don't remember seeing any designs. I wondered if you did. The only thing I remember is the green face on the box. That was it? Yeah. They didn't like show any oh, designs? No, there was a bit at the back. I think Terry and... He, um, yeah, Terry and the Joker are fighting at, at the end. Okay. And then in the Clown Factory. Uh, okay. The Toy Factory, sorry. I remember there was another trailer for the movie, but it didn't show anything. It just used to, I think you might remember this, it showed like in full 2000. Yeah. Yeah, and it had like this really cool epic music. It was Beware His Presence and that sort of thing. The arch enemy's back and you hear the Mark Hamill laugh at the end. And it says, uh, brand new Batman Beyond animated movie coming to DVD and VHS it says the joke's on you <laughs> that was a really cool trailer do you remember that one I think isn't that a special feature on the on the DVD I believe it was yeah there's there was yeah. two there was two um, trailers you had the one that where you didn't see anything just mm. hear the Joker's laugh and then the second one it was kind of like a little teaser of what the movie was going to be like right yeah and uh, I think I saw the teaser on it was on a Pokemon video. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the... Oh, yeah. um, I think it was the first one. Well, the first volume or the first movie? Might have been either the first movie or the second movie. I, I mean, if it's 2000, then I'm probably guessing it was the second movie then. Oh, right. At the end of the video. Like, after the video finished, it had like, a little trailer oh. right at the very end, like a teaser trailer of what the movie was going to be like no i'm just saying because do you remember the tapes you can get like the volumes yeah 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 yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. i remember those but yeah that was how i found that was just remembering school just going to computer club and just wanting to see something of the movie but i suppose it's good in a way they didn't show you anything yeah because internet wasn't as strong back then as it is now everything was all kept under wraps so yeah, I suppose it was nice that um, they kept everything as a big surprise. So we are now going to start watching the movie. We are going to be watching the uncut version of Return of the Joker. And it's kind of like an audio commentary that we're going to do. So we're going to be talking about it while we're watching it. So let's let's do this. Let's begin. Here we go. Oh, the old Bugs Bunny <laughs> Warner Brothers logo. Always impressed me how 
grand that sounded at the time. You know, it, it did. Yeah. yeah, it was very um, epic. Here's uh, Gotham, or as they now call it, Neo Gotham. Ah, uh, Neo Gotham. Yeah. yeah. I thought this was um, quite a cool opening. Very um, different to your typical Batman Beyond. There they are the Jokers, or a so, version of the Jokers. What's that character called? Woof or Wolf? Woof. Woof. Right. <laughs> Moof, <laughs> Moof, <laughs> Moof Beyond. Yeah. yeah, I remember these guys. Mm-hmm. See, I always thought the Jokers. I thought it was going to be the Jokers from the TV show with oh, J right. with J Man and the rest of them. Was he? In, is he? In, all right. I always thought they should have been in this movie. What do you think? Could have been, but isn't the J Man only in it for the first episode? Who the main guy of the Jokers? Oh, yeah, he's in quite a lot. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was I don't remember him in the first episode. Yeah, I mean, I thought they would have been in the movie, but I don't know why. Maybe it would have confused people having two Jokers instead of one. So we see the Jokers as Terry. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, we see the Jokers a lot like stealing technology, which was kind of different because the Jokers were never really about stealing high-tech equipment were they no i mean i know there was one episode in season two where they stole like, a spaceship from the military didn't they true but it was never really their thing was it stealing technology i like the jokers but it makes no sense because you know in the justice league mm. you got um what the royal flash game yeah but if they if they're inspired by the joker how comes they not around as much yeah, that always bugged me about that. But I always looked at the Jokers, I mean, you remember this as well, I always looked at the Jokers as nothing more than a tribute gang oh, to yeah, the Joker, definitely. which made sense because the Joker was never really mentioned in the show at all. I mean, the only thing we saw was an old beat-up wanted poster of the Joker in the old police headquarters oh yeah you remember yeah. that but that was it that was the only thing that we never saw of the joker and i remember um, the joker not being around and it always confused me like what happened to him why is he not in batman beyond i mean even if he's an old man why is he never talked about i mean did that always bug you kind of but then i wouldn't have liked to see an old man Joker with no, like, I don't think I would have either. you know, glossary bag or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would have been a bit painful. But I think when they announced that they were going to do a Batman Beyond movie, oh, the deeds, love these two. The so, deeds, yeah. When they announced that they were going to do a Batman Beyond movie with the Joker, I thought, well, okay, this is this is the way to do it. You know, save the best till last, bring in the big villain for the movie and it made sense so I'm glad they did that as you say that it wouldn't have been right seeing the Joker in the show so it's good that they saved him for the movie yeah definitely man so we see now the Jokers have made off with the equipment and the Jokers gang was Woof Gaul I'm guessing is it Bonk was it? yeah it was Bonk yeah, yeah it was Bonk uh, bonk. <laughs> bonk, bonk, yeah. Um, Chucko and your favourites, the Deeds, the Deeds yeah. Twins. We never really learned much about these guys, did we? No, I mean, I've always thought they're most like a. I don't know if they was meant to be a, anything to do with um, Charles. You know the um, Manson family. Yeah. Like, you know how Charles Manson had these followers? I, mm. I always thought they were the, you know, the Manson family of beyond. Well, I remember um, um, girls in Japan, Japan, Japanese girls, yeah. when they channel in that rock chick sort of look, they always used to wear those big platform high heel boots, didn't they? they all, <laughs> and the little hot pants and the straw hair. So it's kind of where they got that look from. Oh, you mean like the chicks from, um, is it Gold Member? The Fembots. No, the Japanese girls. I'm not going to say their names because of oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah, 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 but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be the twins. Yeah. Who Austin Powers wanted to hook up with. Mm. <laughs> twins, Basil. Twins. Oh, my God, twins. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know the two you mean. Yeah. They kind of like that in a way. I mean, this movie came out in 2000. Golden Member came out like 
I think three four years after 2003 so yeah right, so in yeah. a way you could probably say that Austin Powers maybe nicked a bit of maybe uh, maybe but um, this is a really cool opening this is such a cool opening mm. anytime you get a Batman movie with clowns robbing stuff it's always cool <laughs> it never gets old it's a classic Batman thing like Batman trying to stop a gang of clowns from robbing something perfect opening for a Batman movie and it just works also you know when uh once once in future thing mm. we see these guys again don't we yeah That's the guy in the, in the the pink unitard oh um chucko chucko yeah and he's got yeah. like the wheel it always reminded me of um return to oz oh yeah that was creepy as yeah. fuck that film oh sorry. Yeah. Right. sorry so um yep the jokers have got away and here is the opening credits always found this opening very um generic yeah i mean it's okay i, really I like felt, it though no it's fine but the music's awesome oh yeah the music oh, i love that music yeah mega props to uh christopher carter for composing the score <laughs> for return of the joker because he did a lot of the music for the show and uh two great bands that collaborated together for the music video for his film called um, Crash was uh, Mephisto Odyssey and Static X great, yeah. two great bands definitely really takes me back to the secondary school days <laughs> yeah they um, did the music for Batman Beyond Return of the Joker with Christopher Carter and um, I remember the music video um, Crash where you see all these girls and guys dressed up as the jokers dancing in the bat cave yeah, yeah. and you see the band just playing on the top where the batmobile is rocking out well that's a really cool video i think maybe the intro do you think the intro could have had something like i don't know their whole history of batman and the joker yeah definitely playing in the background like cool. maybe like you see at the beginning jack napier falling into the chemicals uh, and he comes yes. out as the joker you could have just had the whole intro it's just their whole history and then it just slowly you don't obviously we don't see what actually happens to the joker after but it just slowly fades to black mm. because there's an intro on youtube which someone made i can't remember who it was but they made an intro for the movie but the dna stuff yeah, yeah. it's cool but at it the same time it, come, it gives a lot of stuff away but it's Definitely. a cool intro recommend you check that out it's really cool and here is the bat cave and uh <laughs> oh, dear. ouch poor two face i like the fact that there's a a riddler dummy there yeah <laughs> it's, like, it's good to know that the riddler's not completely forgotten that uh, you know he's still there in some shape or form yeah bruce has never lost it <laughs> he'll always have it as far as i'm concerned good old ace ah uh, i love this yeah ace is awesome it's kind of cool that they brought ace back because ace was an old character from the 50s he yeah. was in for about maybe six issues as the bat hound you remember ace used to have a mask <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so it's cool they brought ace back i think they had like a, a bat symbol on the on the collar as well i bat think tag. it did yeah so we see um a news report bruce wayne has got his company back so it's no longer wayne powers it's now back to wayne enterprises jordan that, price <laughs> voiced by mark hamill uh, that was the biggest Herring. Red herring ever, man. Of course, and the design as well. Look at the way he's drawn. Yeah. Um, where would you say the movie set? Because some people have said it's set after the episode King's Ransom, when Paxton Powers is locked up, and Bruce got his company back. Where would you think it's set? Some people say it's King's Ransom. I thought it was set after season three. So where would you think it, the movie set roughly? I always thought it was after season three. I thought Same. season, but. I think it could be set between the different seasons or set after an episode. Yeah, I am. I'm unless someone can correct us. I'm going with the fact that 
the movie's probably set after the third season. When does Max find out he's Batman? Beginning of middle, I think it's like. Oh, it's season one? No, season three. Oh, season that's three. Not season three. Uh, season oh. two. It's season two. Alright, so that's anywhere after season two, I guess. Then. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our favourite Max is not in this movie. Is she not? <laughs> no! Oh, well. She's not in maybe, this movie. Maybe she doesn't know he's Batman yet, then. Maybe this is after season one. It's possible, but no, Max is sadly not in this movie. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. No, I thought, I thought she was. I thought she might have been in one scene. Uh, that sucks. Word of advice, everyone. Never go out clubbing with your girlfriend after you just had a night of crime fighting. <laughs> it's never a good idea. <laughs> Poor old Terry. He's just completely out of it. <laughs> oh, man. I mean... Bruce is right, you know, a good night's rest would have been more beneficial, but... Oh, dear, poor Terry. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool that you see Terry's trying to stay awake. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, would you go out clubbing straight after you've had a night battering the Jokers? You wouldn't, would you? No. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Terry. So that's the cool thing with Terry and Bruce. Bruce being the billionaire he would go out fighting crime and he would just sleep it all off but Terry was still a high school kid still trying to balance being a teenager so that was quite cool and here we are the Jolly Jack factory and this here we go now this is awesome no I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> I love that one I know now um, I love the design they did for the Joker. It's very um, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Very definitely. Hannibal Lecter. And I'm glad that they didn't go with making him look like J-Man. I'm glad they came up with a really cool design, which was just basically like a, would you say it's like a leather bodysuit in a way? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. I never really thought what it's made from. Obviously, it wouldn't be like vinyl or no, PVC. No, it but wouldn't be PVC. It's like a bodysuit, like something out of Star Trek. Yeah, but I don't know. I can see leather because it's kind of got that shine to it. But Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that with Joker Beyond that they um, cut his hair very short and slicked it back. Yeah. And made him look more like... A horror character. Oh god! Bang. I made him all the bang. I love that. <laughs> Brilliant. So silly. It's simple but very Joker-like. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Here we go. Here's the reveal. That's a brilliant design. Definitely. I must say. He looks like Hannibal Lecter and a Hammer horror character in a way. Mm. Kind of like a combination of both, like a zombie. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first time we officially see the Joker in the Batman Beyond world. And it, he doesn't disappoint. No, that's true. But I can see, now you said zombie, I can see his face ain't entirely white anymore. It's kind of greyish. Yeah. yeah. I haven't really noticed that before. And another thing as well, they went with his eyes, which doesn't really get talked about much. They made his eyes red. Mm. I thought that was a really nice touch. <laughs> just sick <laughs> see all that is not on the well my version the cut version oh the theatrical version yeah yeah I mean when I had the um, what you had for a long time and then I bought the script book and it had all this other stuff that was left out so when I bought this because I found out about this a few years after and I watched it I thought it's just going to be the same as your one but just a couple of differences it was like a completely different movie wow and uh yeah it was really good i mean there's some sick stuff in here like dead <laughs> see all those black lines would be different companies how mm. cool it be if one was like called enterprises and yeah. arrow this palmer and, tech yeah yeah palmer that would have been awesome queen industries yeah yeah that would have been really cool and we see Joker is getting ready to crash the party. Brilliant. Oh. Brilliant scene here. It's kind of good in a way that they gave Bruce Wayne his company back. 
Yeah. Because, you know, it made sense, really, from a story point of view. I don't care what anyone says. He looks like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> he does. I was going to say that. He looks like Clint Eastwood. We get some strange feedback. That's the first thing I heard. That laugh on the PA system of the Joker. That was the first thing I heard on the trailer. Like, yeah, that was really cool. Yes. Yeah, I always found the co um, the non collars on the suits kind of stupid. I like the well, I think in America they call them lapels. Oh, uh, little, oh yeah, the, the, the shirt, the, yeah, yeah. collars, shirt lapels sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It looks weird. It's like something like the Jetsons. Yeah, like I mean, that. I love the Hannibal Lecter masks. They're mm. just awesome. Those gas masks. Yeah, I mean, the clothes in Beyond were very different to the original animated series because the animated series had a lot of um, folds and lapels, didn't they? Also, where does, where does that tie clip on to if not, like, around the neck? I mean... I'd probably imagine we'll just click at the middle of the shirt. Maybe. Just, ugh, just, the, the, I just don't like the design of that. Nah, I don't either. It just looks very plain and dull. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant, this is. And this is the first time Bruce has seen the Joker in God knows how many years. <laughs> I would like to better if he winked at him. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> that would have been brilliant. Just winking, goes, hey, Brucey. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. Mark Hamill, you know, to us, is the definitive voice of the Joker. But this performance he gives here in Return of the Joker movie, it's probably one of his best because it's not like how he was in the previous shows where he's a bit wacky. He's very calm and a bit more sinister. So I think that was probably one of Mark Hamill's best performances. Yeah, I like how um, Joker's just pra practically disses Terry Sue. Goes, <laughs> oh, I missed the cape. Ears are too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like the way just that Joker just says, you're not my Batman. You know, he's just too... Ugh, too futuristic. <laughs> Funny though, speaking of futuristic, they're all outside with masks on. Yeah. It feels like it's 2020. Oh no. Foreshadowing. Oh no. 20 years. Oh, oh god. 20 years later. Oh dear. <laughs> now this was an awesome return. Do you think, um, you know the first time we see Joker Beyond, do you think they should have just swapped the scenes around? Do you think maybe they should have done Joker making his first appearance at Bruce Wayne's party or we see him at the factory? Do you think it worked out fine like that or do you think they could have done swapped them around uh, I don't really mind I think both would have been alright yeah and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, typical Joker who's it going to be stop me or save the people it's a classic Joker yeah, man. never gets old I like how um, when Bruce sees the Joker he just doesn't say anything he doesn't say anything at all does he there he is there <laughs> yeah, I like the fact he just doesn't even acknowledge the fact that the Joker's back. I think because the shock of him being back has just knocked him back for six, really. Love the design of the Batmobile. Yeah. <laughs> this is quite funny here. There's a little line coming at mid 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I like these little theories coming at clone. clone. Yeah, definitely. Robot. <laughs> Captain America reference. <laughs> All Futurama, yeah. All Futurama. <laughs> yeah. Shut up and drive. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I like those little clues that they give out about what the Joker could be. So that, that was quite cool. Tim Drake. Oh, uh, yes. This is the first time we see uh, Tim Drake. Now, Tim Drake, to a lot of fans out there who've watched the show, will remember that Tim Drake was Robin in the DCAU and this is the first time we've seen him in the DCAU since season four of Bad Men. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, yeah, Tim Drake was never really mentioned in the show, was he? No, they did mention him once, actually, tell a lie. They oh. did mention him once, very briefly. Did they? 
Yeah, just very briefly, they did mention yeah. Tim very briefly. But other than that, he was never really referenced much. Now, um, Barbara Gordon and Terry, as we all know, had a very uh, up and down relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't get any better here. Oh, Terry. He has no idea what the joke is like, does he? No. It's quite flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I suppose it's understandable for Terry not to take the joke as seriously because he's never he's never dealt with him like that before. No, but he's had at least a year of facing up with the jokers. So, he yeah. should have some idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing by this point... Terry's been Batman for. I mean, I'm just guessing. They've never. I don't know how long he's been Batman by this point, but I'm guessing he's been Batman for maybe two years. Yeah. Maybe yeah, roughly. Yeah. Or a year and a half at least. I can imagine this is year two. For yeah, him. I'd imagine this is like Terry's year two. So uh, this is quite a good scene here. Look at Ace. Oh. He's awesome. <laughs> I like the shots of the Jack Napier there. That is awesome. And Bruce is just in full detective mode here. <laughs> <laughs> that was from um, Holiday Nights. Nights. Uh, yeah, I, saw, right. I saw that recently. Yeah. That's a good one. Nice bit of continuity there. Well, kind of, but it was a different design. They've redone yeah, the design. yeah, they'd read it under design, but the continuity still remains intact. Yeah. So I'm glad they kept that. Well, that's true, actually. Bruce never really talked about him. He was a psychopath. <laughs> a monster. Awesome. Wow. It's kind of like, in a way, what how the fans were reacting. Because how is it possible the Joker's still around after this time? Oh, this scene coming up's awesome. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the way he seems like he's, yeah yeah now it's kind of funny that terry says you killed him because do you remember in the dark knight returns part two um batman did he he did kill him in a way didn't he yeah um i'm trying to think he set his body a lot um the joker broke his own neck yeah, he snapped his own neck didn't he and batman just put something on him and he just burst into flames oh, yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, this is wicked. From a distance, because my eyes aren't so great anymore, mm. the red symbol on that costume really looks like the Canadian flag. <laughs> oh, God. Is it really? Yeah. Captain Canada Beyond. <laughs> Captain Canada Beyond. Brilliant. Yeah, this is the first time, officially, they talk about Terry's background, about he was in Juvenile Hall, uh, Young Offenders... Uh, institution because he had a criminal record yeah, this is the first time they've actually really delved into Terry's backstory because they didn't really talk about it much in the show they may have made little couple sly references but did they give him a friend who become like his version of Two-Face big time big time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. he came in season three yeah season three he was in it for oh, a couple of episodes oh, okay. yeah yeah he was his mate Big Time and he called Terry Tiny Terry because <laughs> Terry was just a little boy and Big Time was much older than him. Definitely. Uh, screw you, I don't want to be Batman anymore. Keep your bat suit. <laughs> <laughs> you screwed up big time. <laughs> I like the way Ace looks on us. Really, Bruce? <laughs> you know he's just a dog, but it's just little things like that. It's like, real. <laughs> you screwed up there, Bruce. Yeah, great scene that was. Uh, Matt's McGuinness. They actually made him Robin in the recent Oh, books. right, yeah. I didn't get around to them once. Yeah. It's not canon to this, though. No, no. Which is why I've not bothered reading it. I mean, would have been cool if it was canon. <laughs> Brilliant. His yeah. mum is basically just um, the wife of the Jetsons, isn't she? Who, um, Jane Jetson. Yeah, it's the hair, and even the, the dress she wears, she's very much based on that design. It's I'm like sure an older is. Jane Jetson. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I never really looked at it like that, because Mary McGuinness didn't really have 
many appearances oh. in the show. Not really. I mean, the first episode. Yeah. Of, and then you got the second. What was the one with the news report dude finds out that Bruce is Batman and he threatens to expose him? Oh, uh, sneak peek. Yeah, she's oh, in wonderful. that one. Yeah, she's in that one. She's not in that many. No. Dana Tan just looks like an animated Kristen Crook. <laughs> I know this was way before Smallville, but... Not that long ago. Well, Smallville was 2001. 2001. So, yeah, not much in it, I suppose. I think, look at that woman in the background. She's oh. like humongous. Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is... Now, I like this design of the deeds. Very, um... Pre-Lady Gaga. <laughs> so, yeah. This is what I don't get. Is the hair they have is the Dee Dee's um, wigs or is it wigs? When it's I would lives? imagine the hair in this scene, I would imagine it's wigs. Because you can probably tuck away your hair in a, that long of hair mm. in a, you know, in a wig. Yeah. But I'm not sure. So we see Bruce's putting something together. Wow, Terry, um, sorry, Ace. He must have the sharpest ears in the <laughs> universe. How could he hear that? Because I didn't, I didn't hear anything. No. Well, Crypto can. He's got competition in the hearing department. Wow. Apart from Rachel Gaul and a couple of Hardax robots, nobody had. Oh, and Ink as well. Oh, yeah. But none of the classic. Batman villains ever came into the Batcave, did they? Apart from Raish. Oh, yeah, I was going to say Raish, yeah. But Raish didn't technically break in, did he? Not as such. No. Oh, this is awesome. This is like Bruce's worst nightmare. The Joker coming into the Batcave. Oh, man, this is awesome. This is... Batman. That's a classic picture, that is. Anytime you put in Joker, Batman Beyond in the GIFs, that's the uh -huh. first one. Right, yeah. Always. Yep. Typical night out in a club fighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I do like the lava lamps. Oh, it's very um, cool. psychedelic sort of uh, lava lamps. Yeah. Yeah. My grand had um, one of those. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're quite they're quite expensive. I remember my dad bought them. Oh, Chucko. Bang. Bang. Oh yeah, remember um, Ghoul They um, just before the series got cancelled, uh, comic book wise. Yeah. They made Ghoul into the main bad guy, didn't they? It would have been interesting. Yeah, they spent nearly a whole series bu building up Ghoul, and they just cancelled it. Shame, really, because he became the new head of the Joker's, didn't he? Yeah. And he was wearing a suit. Yeah, that was cool. Also, did you see that scene with Terry and Dana? It's mm. literally the old... Death in a family. Yeah. 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 Oh, after when Bruce pulls Jason's body out of the rubble. Yeah, it's a little yeah like. it does a little bit. But they, that kind of pose was in there a lot of things as well. Yeah, I mean, that sort of um, shot's been used, as you say, in everything, really. Yeah. The Phoenix Saga, where Scott pulls out um, Gene's body. Yeah. Um, uh, Superman pulling out Lois's body a couple times. Superman and Supergirl in Crisis, Crisis yeah. Oh, iconic picture. And, um, of course, the one that gets talked about a lot was when Spider-Man pulled out Gwen Stacy. Oh, after yeah. After she yeah. had her neck snapped. Oh, well, that's... Wow. <laughs> Terry must be the strongest kid in Gotham. <laughs> How the hell can he push in giant lava lamp like that that's just insane yeah I thought that's really cool because normally when you have a fight in a nightclub the lights automatically go back to normal don't they yeah I like the fact that the lights are still flashing so I thought that adds a nice contrast this is the last time we see Dana really yeah. oh no epilogue Oh yeah, I know that. Oh, well, I mean, like, in the no, movie. Keep it a secret. Sorry. Yeah, but this is the last time that we see um, Dana in this movie. And Chelsea. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Chelsea as well. 
Because didn't she have a plot where she was just where she was splicing? Mm, that was at That's, season two. Yeah. Oh, this, this is. I like this. The music is just fantastic. Really. I like what they did with the music. Like, they didn't just make it a whole rock score. It's like it was rock music, but they kept a lot of the old classic orchestral elements of the animated series. So you had like a mixture, like orchestral rock. Yeah. I thought that was really a good job they did that for this movie because this is an epic movie and I wouldn't really want to just hear just rock music. It works fine for the show. Yeah, yeah. But it works really well for the movie. Damn. I love the purple skyline. Yeah. Ever since um, the series begun, I always loved it. Yeah, the skyline of Gotham went through some weird changes. In the animated series, it started off pure black. Yeah. Then later on, it became like dark blue. Mm. And then that stayed that way for about most of the first three seasons. And then season four, it became like this blood red sky. Oh dear. Nice callback to the yeah. uh, first episode. <laughs> I like this. This is awesome. It looks like blood, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I know it's not, but it looks like blood. Jeez. <laughs> Poor Bruce. Wow. All those years he avoided that. And it finally happened to him. <laughs> First time since forever. <laughs> He's actually <laughs> smiling. Oh, dear. Do you remember that singing forever? Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, Kevin Cornwall, just... The thing about Kevin Conroy, you don't really hear him laugh that much as Batman, but when you do, it's quite scary. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it cool. Just seeing Bruce laying there poisoned, laughing, especially being as old as Bruce is, it's quite scary. And you know, Kevin Conroy just, he doesn't get enough credit. He He's the best voice actor for Batman ever, slash Bruce Wayne he never really gets talked about enough he's just awesome in this movie definitely man yeah oh, poor Bruce I can't, you know when they did the animated mo oh, animated comic books yeah the tie-in comic books yeah Um, not the tie-in but the ones that I think it's Batman Beyond Universe oh yeah that was the third series when yeah I'd what did you think of Barbara having Bruce's kid? Mm, what, being pregnant? And all? Yeah, and then she got beat up and the baby died. Very, very it's dark, isn't it? It's dark, but it works. I would yeah, like to have seen that in the show. I can see why a lot of people said they weren't from this universe, because you would never have seen that in this universe. Probably not, but it's still connected to it. But Yeah, yeah. I believe so. But. Oh, poor Ace. Got the hell beat out of him. Oh. Glad oh, that you didn't see it. I mean, <laughs> looks like Stewie. Yeah. Oh, older Stewie. House boy. <laughs> Definitely something what the Joker would say. I like what they do with. Oh dear. It's a very, it's very misleading what they do here. Very misleading. They want you to think one thing, but it turns out to be the other. I mean. The only way I can think of it is that Harley Quinn, because she's, she's a nan at the end of spoilers, yeah. but um, she's obviously the uh, the grandmother of D the Didis. Yeah. So who's who's the grandfather. son or the son? The grandfather. Well, I always assume that the grandfather is the Joker. Yeah. That's why Jordan Price, because I think Jordan Price is their son. More than likely. Who she gives up for adoption, and that's why, yeah. It's possible. Oh, here we go. Unless she had two twin boys. Flashback time. Yeah. Ooh. Yep, this was the only time, as far as Beyond is concerned, not counting the comics, they referenced Dick Grayson. Yeah. And here's Tim Drake. Tim Drake's my favourite Robin, but I like Tim Drake more in the comics than the show. He was okay in the show, but I, I like the comic book Tim Drake much more I like him too but I really think you know the episode of Static Shock when you see him a lot older for some reason mm. they should have gone with I mean they should have stuck with that didn't they yeah they oh, changed him up just make him taller if nothing else yeah they made him he was a lot older and he, his voice was different yeah 
There he is, classic Joker. Yeah, the redesigns, this is pretty much the new adventures season four time, isn't it? Yeah. Around this stuff, anyway. That chick there, I always thought it was Black Canary. Yeah, she's meant to be. Oh, she's meant to be. I, I'm, I assume so. I mean, I mean, yeah. Okay. Because obviously they're meant to be hookers in this. Or, yeah. um Sorry, sex workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously they can't say that it's a cartoon. Yeah. It's just the same as the Dark Knight Return. No, Dark. The sequel to Dark Knight Returns, where you see a lot of porn stars mm. who are dressed up as superheroes. Yeah, yeah. That's quite cool. Seeing like Robin in a straight jacket popping out of the jack in the box. <laughs> nice touch. Yeah. Very nice touch. Kind of reminds me of something they would have done in Batman 66. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I like that little bit there where at least for that few seconds really adds a lot of tension to it it's just no music you just hear the rain that's mm. a really nice touch really nice touch it's, it's little things like that that make it really cool definitely how old would you say I mean I never really disclose it but how old would you say Bruce and Barbara are at this time uh well, I think for Bruce, this comes after Destroyer. Yeah, so he would be around mid forties. Yeah. Barbara, how old would you think she is? Twenty-four, maybe twenty-two. Twenty-two or mid twenties, at least. I'm gonna probably guess twenty-five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Company. I like how they've decorated Arkham. It's like some cheesy <laughs> 60s sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> it's really uh, very twisted. Yeah. <laughs> Robin? See, if you can give Joker a new update look, why couldn't they have done that bit with Batman? Because at this time, I imagined him in the suit already, in the Beyond suit. Or the um, the one that you they come up with later, or the black and red. Yeah. In the cape. Well, they never really explained exactly when that suit came about. I'm probably going to guess that the early Beyond, or the pre-Beyond suit we'll call it, because they never really gave it a proper name. I'm going to probably guess that that suit came about after this, sometime after. But yeah, I see what you mean, like age-wise, time-wise, you'd think Bruce would have that sort of costume by now, because he just looks the same as he does in Season 4. Really. Yeah. Oh dear. Harley Quinn and Joker talking about kids. Just <laughs> just wrong. <laughs> oh, this, this come up here. Spare kids, you know. <laughs> like, they just like, like clothes. Oh, this is definitely oh. a horror, this is. Body horror. Body yeah. horror, yeah. One thing DCAU didn't do often, but when they did it, they always did a great job embracing the horror aspects of things. They didn't do it much, but when they did... Oh, God. There's a lot... I mean, I know you probably... I don't think you like them, but... There are a lot of good body horror films. Mm. They're quite interesting. I'm going to have to look into those. Yeah. Wow. Well... Oh. It's like, what's worse than killing Robin? Yeah. Turning Robin into a joker junior Conversion. that's probably worse oh yeah at least with at least with um killing robin you know at least he went out fighting yeah but just making him into a junior version and he's just laughing oh like this yeah. just it's just rock wrong on all shoulders yeah because you're right because he's robbed tim of all he was mm, that's probably worse than killing oh, him definitely man it's like dementia yeah really bad and the fact that you know Robin has Joker Jr he doesn't talk he just keeps laughing it just makes it even more creepier there was a line somewhere I'm not sure if it's in the script but I read somewhere on the DCU Wikipedia there was supposed to be a line where I think I told you about this before there was supposed to be a line where Batgirl asks Harley 
why did you do it? How could you help the Joker? And I think Harley says something, oh, this is payback for what you did to Red. Oh, right. Poison Ivy. So they never put it in there. They should have done, really. Mm. So payback for what happened to Red. You know, obviously, anyone who knows who Red is, it's Poison <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> Do you think they were kind of a secret couple in this universe? Mm, I'm not too sure. Maybe. I wouldn't say they were a couple in this universe, but I believe there were some shenanigans going on at some point. Yeah. <laughs> they probably did some experimenting. Especially like in the episode, you know when um, she leaves the Joker and oh, hangs yeah. out with Ivy. Yeah, I think something happened. Obviously off camera. Yeah, but. of course. But I think they didn't become a couple in that sense. But they definitely did something. Something did happen. Yeah. Oh dear. Wow. <laughs> I don't care who you are, even if you are Harley Quinn. There is no way. You could survive there. Unless you caught onto another lower part of the rock. Yeah, but then why didn't we see her after? Unless you can't... I know, Batman and Harley, I guess that's still meant to be before this. Yeah, this is so. a bit before this, yeah. Oh, this scene. Oh, this is awesome, this is. This, to me, as far as I'm concerned, as far as this universe is concerned, cemented Joker is the worst kind of villain ever big thumb <laughs> look at that and he films it as well was That's that like a half eaten donut I so. I was like, what do you do with that I think, was, <laughs> I think there's like a half eaten donut yeah originally the apron was supposed to say kill the cook oh right but they changed it to kiss the cook which is fair enough oh this is just messed up here big thumb jeez and he films it as well yeah, this is definitely the DCAU's take on death in the family. Big time. True. But then, what I want to know is, not that, I don't know how, just, why is he still wearing a rubbing suit if that's all been pumped into him? Maybe he, maybe he took it off after he was finished. I hope it was Tim who took it off, because therefore was, that's creepy, man. Oh, yeah. Even if it's Harley Quinn, he took, he's still meant to be, what, 12? I'm not sure how old he's supposed to be in this universe, but I'm guessing he's supposed to be about 13 or 14. Yeah, but he's, that's still that grown-ass man or woman mm. taking off ch a child's clothing. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the um, Joker learn confirming that Bruce Wayne's Batman? I like it. I, but I hope... Well, I like the idea that the Joker kind of knows that he... But only he should know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've always been the, I've always, like you, I've always been under the belief that Joker has always known Bruce Wayne has been Batman. Maybe not from the beginning, but no. somewhere along the way, he knew that he was Batman and he just kept it to himself, really, because it wouldn't be fun. Yeah. And, uh, oh God. I mean, the man's not an idiot. Look, no. he could just, you know, you can't be an idiot and pull off what he'd done to Robin. And we see, uh, Bruce has got his leg stabbed, so at least we know how he, why he has the cane. I always thought that was just because of old age, to be fair, but... Well, I read somewhere that um, Bruce got the limp because Joker stabbed him. Yeah. And obviously, as you get older, it, the injuries yeah, do catch yeah. up to you, so that's probably why he has the cane. And probably, as you say, old age and years of crime fighting have caught up to him. Hmm. Especially in the... What, the... Uh... Batman Universe comics where you see him having to shovel down a load of pills just to stay alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also in the epilogue. Oh, yeah. We see that quite a lot, actually. Don't do it. Too late. That's not funny. <laughs> Jeez. I thought that was a really cool twist that instead of Batman being the one who kills the Joker, because people expect that, I thought it was kind of cool that they made it Robin yeah because it's yeah. not really something you'd expect no and also Robin can can take that Batman you you know just, I don't know no I don't like it in Batman 66 with Wonder Woman where he's the one who killed Joker yeah because then he retires being Batman and doesn't even let Dick become Batman yeah but <clears throat> like they did here they you know Robin being the one who pulls the trigger I think it's a good twist yeah 
And they reveal here that Jim Gordon knows about what happened and, you know, being part of the team, he kept the secret out of respect. So I thought it was a nice touch. There is actually a comic book, I'm not sure, it might be in Universe, where you see a bit more of what happened after and Batgirl quits yeah, on that same yeah. night. So that was good. They should have added that in there, but I guess you can't add everything <laughs> in a movie. I think that would have been an afterthought like mm. from whoever wrote the comic. Yeah. But I like that fact that Jim Gordon was on it, though. Yeah, it made, made perfect sense, really. Uh, there's a little line here that Tim left Bruce after to go out on his own. Do you think he may have gone with Titans by that point? Uh, definitely, man. Mm. Oh, because you know, like, State of Shock, when he says, where's Robin? He goes, oh, he's with the Titans. Yeah. So, I never thought about it, but maybe that's after this. When he says determined to go out on his own, so maybe he went to join the Titans. So it's, it's a high possibility. I mean, who's the bad guy for that episode? It's Poison Ivy, isn't it? Uh, and Harley Quinn? Yes. Hard as Nails. Hard as Nails, yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That was Harley and Ivy for that episode. Um, so we see Tim is kind of like a science technician. Nice. Guy. <laughs> nice. It's funny because the guy who does the voice of the young boy Robin, oh, uh, young boy Tim, actually does this for a living. What's his name? Matthew Valencia. I think so, yeah. Yeah, because um, there was another boy who did the voice of Tim Drake in Mystery of the Batswoman. But it Corey, wasn't something, right? Something Marinful. Oh. oh he okay. was quite young. He was much younger than Matthew Valencia. Yeah, this is the first time Terry and Tim Drake have met each other officially. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Mirror watched this years ago with a friend and he said that he looked like Simon Cal. I'm not sure, that's a bit insulting. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> is it like what, apparently Paul? the high trousers? Oh, it's like Simon oh, Cal. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you said earlier, the clothes in the future. As far as this timeline is concerned, it's just bizarre. Definitely. Really bizarre. I like that when <laughs> Terry just disappears and Tim just says, nothing changes then. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Nightwing someday, because you got stories. Dick Grayson should have been in this movie. Definitely. Even just a cameo. He's mentioned about twice. Especially at the end, seeing where they're all in the hospital room with Tim yeah that should have been when he came she could have had him up with a grey ponytail oh sexy yeah but it's creepy if that's literally like he's niece I know, or something I know but <laughs> or it could be his daughter and he doesn't even realise but she would know that's yeah, she, they would both know <laughs> unless they're into some you know Game of Thrones ball yeah well yeah mm. <laughs> whatever, whatever rocks your boat really oh. Diner? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not really, but it looks like Diner. Yeah. Detox. Detox boss, man. Woof gets <laughs> Woof get seasick. E oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Have they ever revealed who Goal is underneath the makeup? No. Oh. No, they never did. Um, Woof, there's a little thing they mentioned about Woof in one of the comics. Wolf was originally just some random punk out of the Jokers, or a, a gang of the Jokers, and he went through a number of splicing. Yeah. So he's kind of a half dog, half hyena sort of uh, splicing crap that went on. And I don't think they ever knew who his name, so they just called him Wolf because he used to bark like a dog. <laughs> but you can clearly see he's supposed to be like a hyena. Yeah. But I don't know why they call him Wolf. I like the fact he's got a mohawk. That's awesome. Kids. Hmm. Joker and Price. It's funny that we never saw... I don't know why they did that, but we never saw Joker and Jordan Price in the same room, did we? No. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. He's about to go... <laughs> and he's like, no, you idiot, not now. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
this is cool. Good morning. Hang on. Wow, that beam. I know. Man. Reminds me of the um. Reminds me of that that ray that used to fire from the watchtower. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> it's not something you would see in the show much. No. Not to that degree, anyway. I was surprised that wasn't in the game. The you know you save Jordan Price and that you have to be go to the pier. Oh, before the PS One like, game. Yeah. That oh, like you flying game. just to get away from the tidal wave. Yeah, yeah that, that would have been, been a great level. That would have been an awesome level just to get away from it. I think if they ever did one for the PS4, we probably would, or PS5, we probably would get something like that. Because you can imagine that as a level. Yeah. They've done nothing for, you know, this is 20 years, and they've done nothing. The funny thing is, about Return of the Joker, as I said from the beginning, this is the only Batman Beyond animated movie. It's been well over 20 years since yeah. we've had another one. It's weird. It's very strange. I mean, was this movie a success? I I, well, I liked it. Yeah, I liked <laughs> it too, but... I don't know if it was a big success, was it? I've showed this film to so many people who have never really seen one episode of Batman Beyond and they love it. A mm, couple of friends I've showed it to in the past, they they liked it, even though they've never seen Beyond before. Yeah. But they showed this movie to them, they said, yeah, it's really good. How are you feeling? Lousy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, I think this is, one of these films that is universally loved. It's like Mask of the Phantasm or Under the Red Hood. You can't not love this movie. Well, the thing with Mask of the Phantasm was when it came out on Christmas Day in 93, yeah. it initially didn't do well, Death and the Family. Yeah, but on Christmas Day, I mean... It's a strange day to release it. Yeah. yeah. They released it like a week before or a week after, it would have done yeah. a lot better. Well, the thing is with these films, when they come out, a lot of people don't know it about them mm. and then later on as you said they become universally loved well, this is where they start to find out now because Terry asked an interesting question all the bat cases got destroyed but the Robin suit was the one that was ripped to shreds mm. yeah, and obviously it makes sense because Joker got shot by him or did he <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, because even if you see, don't like the designs of this film, the mystery of how the joke is still alive when he yeah, is... Yeah, that's what makes... Yeah, it suckles you in. That's what makes this movie such a classic and up there with Bitter Old Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that um, Robin became Bitter Crow, didn't he? Yeah, and like, one well, of the most... I don't know, I think it was one of the earliest Elseworlds. Yeah. Well, I mean... The thing with this movie, why it's so cool and why it's so good is because if you've watched all three seasons of the show mm. and then you watch the movie and then you see the Joker, it rules you in. How does the Joker come back? How is he still alive? How? Why does it? he still look the same as he did last time we saw him? How is that possible? And that really gets your head jarring. And you're trying to figure out, well, who could the Joker be? Which clearly can't be Jack Napier because we saw him die. Mm. So who else could it be? And it's it really reels you in, as you say. Even if you don't like the designs of the movie, it's the story that grips you. Definitely. Yeah. This is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool that Joker Beyond, even though he's much different to the normal Joker there's still some old little characteristics and mannerisms of the Joker we know from the original series so I'm glad they kept some aspects to it they didn't completely make him a sinister character no nice <laughs> does he look like a smiley face or something <laughs> I think it does yeah, yeah. 
I think there's a shop coming up here. Welcome to Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it does come <laughs> up somewhere. Toodles <laughs> Yeah, like you were saying, you know, even if you're not a fan of the designs of the show, as you say, it's the story that grips you in, doesn't it? Oh definitely man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Joker's motivations in the movie wasn't really made very clear, was it? I mean, what was he looking to do? I mean, we always know that in the animated series, he always wanted to make Batman laugh and, of course, kill him eventually. He wanted <laughs> to pull off like this grand finale scheme of the death of Batman, like it was some sort of epic play or something. But his motivations in the movie, was they ever made clear? Uh, no, I think so. No, uh, unless you just say like he just likes causing trouble. Yeah, chaos for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's all been about chaos anyway. Chaos of evil. <clears throat> yeah, but no, they never really went into detail. Why? I love that. Yeah, never really went into detail. I mean, could have been just some sort of revenge thing. Oh, right, your sidekick killed me a long time ago. Yeah. I'm back for revenge sort of thing. They could have went with that, but they never did. The inside of the Batman build is just like Tron. Pre Tron, yeah, it does actually. Or the suit from Superboy in uh, New 52. Yeah. I guess. Well, yeah, I mean. Reminds me of. Uh, the Matrix. Yeah, but the Matrix is like black and green. But yeah, but he yeah. is like red and black. Yeah. I see that. <laughs> I like that. Papa Spank. <laughs> oh, yeah. With a death ray <laughs> from outer space. That's some spanking. I think... I'm not sure where it was said. It might have been in the comic or it might have been later on in the DCAU. They explained that the Joker stole Cadmus technology to do what he did to Tim. It was an epilogue, yeah. Yeah, it was an epilogue, wasn't it? Yeah. That was, and I think they did say that in a comic book somewhere. Oh, right. Yeah, Joker stole that technology after they banned it. So that kind of makes sense in a way. I think it's meant to be the same episode where the... In the Just League episode with... What are they called? The... Raw Flash game. Yeah. Yeah. The vase. Oh yeah, over oh, the child. Yeah, well that's creepy. Like when she just looks him straight in the eyes and he's ah. Yeah, that's right. Because the last time we saw the Joker, prior to this, I mean this yeah. was like way before, uh, Ace puts Joker in this comatose state and just left him there. And I thought that was the last time we saw him. But then no, the next thing, you yeah. know, the next thing you, know, you see the flashback, he, he's perfectly fine. So they never really explain how he came out of that. Should have done. Yeah. I mean, if you believe that the Fatal Five movie was canon, they do mention that the joke is still in the coma. Mm. Which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. Chuckle! <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> He's not bright, is he? <laughs> Clearly not. But then again, the Jokers were never known for their IQ, were they? No. <laughs> but I do remember there was one... Joker, um, I forget what he was called. He was the one who went to Terry's high school. Uh, he was super smart. Yeah. He was quite evil. Max's rival. Yeah, yeah. He was quite evil, he was. I forget what he was called. Yeah, me too. He was a really good villain. He, he could have been the new Joker easily. And I'm not sure how many episodes that guy was in. It might have been a couple, but he was a really good villain. He was really scary. He had, like, long black straw hair... And that pale face looked like a, a ghost version of Marilyn Manson. Yeah. A really good villain. Would have liked to have seen him work with the Joker in the movie. Maybe that's bonk. Um, the ghoul underneath the... It's possible. Yeah. It is possible. I like that Ace got a little bit of a <laughs> little moment there. Gets a... I don't know really what you'd say. Go at it or bite at it with <laughs> woof. So I'm glad that Ace got to have a little moment marbles in the movie so that was cool love marbles man yeah let's bring them back yeah marbles were quite popular in those days i say those days it wasn't that long ago 
Yeah, we are officially old. Well, Marvel's been around since like my nan's era, man. Same. <laughs> even before, even before my. Oh life. yeah. Yeah, it was like goes all the way back to like World War One, where the boys used to play marbles on the road, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. All the little uh, drain covers. Yeah. Bad guys love their creepy hideouts. It's never a bakery. It's never a. Should be. Imagine that. A <laughs> bakery. Yeah, like it's acid, always. Fantasy filled donuts. Do you know what would have been cool for Joker's hideout in Beyond? The place where it all started. Access oh. chemicals. It should have been that. Not Candy Factory. That's no. more like Harley Quinn sort of thing. Yeah. Not Joker. It should have been Access chemicals. Let's let's settle the score where it all started. I think that would have been awesome. So in this universe is access. See, in my mind, it's always Aces. Is it Aces? Well, I've heard it? some versions. I mean, the one I remember the most from the comics, it was called yeah. the. It was the Ace Playing Card Factory. Yeah. That's the one I remember the most. And that's in Batman eighty nine, isn't it? Ye it? No, that no? was Axis Chemicals. Oh, Axis. And they added oh, that yeah, to the yeah. animated oh, series as well. But then they contradicted themselves and said that season four was the Ace Playing Card. <laughs> <laughs> Just stupid, really. Oh, but the one I remember the most was the Playing Card Factory, and the Joker was a technician who worked there. Yeah. Oh, this beer. This yeah. beer. Bad oysters. Yeah. Oh. Bad oysters. How do you know my name? <laughs> See, right there, when he says bat fake, that clearly says to you, that's not Tim Drake. No. Yeah, this is very horror. Very um, horror. Yeah. Kind of feels like a 60s horror to it as well. Mm, like late 60s sort of horror, like 68. 69 sort yeah. of horror yeah that's one thing DC were good at which they didn't do often but when they did as I said before they're very good at embracing the horror aspects and they don't make it come across as corny they, they really do a good job now this is a good twist here <laughs> very um, I think I remember you said before it's like Doctor Who yeah I would it would kind of be cool if like, you had the master regenerate mm. through like that through just laughing into the next one mm. yeah I mean the way they did the transformation from Tim Drake into the Joker. I'm glad they didn't make it all like fingers all contorting. Yeah. You know, like they did with Kirk Langstrom turning into man. I mean, that was fantastic. Oh, that was awesome. That's perfect. I'm glad they didn't do that for the Joker. I'm no. glad they went a different way. So instead of just going, you know, all whack crazy, <laughs> they just made him just keep laughing until his skin turns white. I thought that was a really cool twist. I thought that was much better. Is it just me? Or does the Joker look like he's been working out there? Yeah. Because I remember you seeing him at the movie at the beginning. He looks really skinny. And next thing you know, he's all built like a brick house. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just time to do the transformation. Could it's be. different every time, maybe. Yeah. I like what you said earlier. The little microchip in his neck looks like a <laughs> smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. What makes this movie extra special is this is the only time we see Joker Beyond. He never appeared again, did he? No. Officially. No, he died. Oh, he gets wiped out. Yeah, he so never came. He never came back again, did he? No. I know there was attempts. To, I know in the comic book run we've got. I know there were attempts to bring him back in some form, but they didn't bring do it, did they? No. They were hinting at maybe bringing the Joker back but yeah, had Terry not Terry um, Tim relapse a little bit maybe a little bit of Joker still that. in the brain somewhere. or that kid from his high school he should have been the new Joker oh yeah he, he yeah. was a, as I said before he was a fantastic villain very well written don't know what happened to him after <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah Joker's motivation is very clear here <laughs> always important to have some defining element of tragedy in a hero's background oh dear <clears throat> Wayne Man. Wayne Man. Stately Stately I think that's, that's a 60 to, yeah. that's 60's reference it's meanwhile it's Tenley Wayne Manor, Manor. Yeah. and a lot of the way he just disses Bruce's age oh, 
<laughs> so gone in the flash before Bruce can hobble <laughs> to safety. Oh, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, the smiley face. The smiley face. Computer. Mum's house. <laughs> no. Hospital. Wayne Manor. Mum's house. He's basically a smiley face. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. I wonder, where was Max and all this? Yeah, I don't really understand, really. I mean, Max was a big part of the show in season two and three. And she's not in this movie. I mean, it really depends where the movie's set. I mean... Gotta be after series one, then. Because some people said that it was set after King's Ransom in season three, mm. when Paxton Powers was taken away, as we said at the beginning. Um, I thought it was set like you. I thought it was set after season three. <laughs> but Snoopy. yeah, it's a bit weird. No, Max... And a lion, Snoopy. <laughs> so it's weird seeing the Joker like, no! Normally Joker would just laugh, oh well, <laughs> you know, never mind. <laughs> yeah, you can clearly see Joker Beyond is very different to the original Joker. Yeah. Yeah, because normally Joker just laughs at everything. I think they should have kept him like this. Like, I don't know. Because I, I would like to see that Jekyll and Hyde type of thing, like Ter um, Tim and the Joker. Mm, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I think the way th they looked at it was, well, the Joker's such a big villain, you couldn't really have him on the show. No. So this is why they did the movie, was to basically address... They didn't really mm. address everything that happened between... Beyond the animated series and beyond, but they they answered the main questions that the fans wanted to know. But yeah, it would have been cool to see more of Joker Beyond because he was he was, a, he was a good villain. So oh, if it's a weapon you're wanting, <laughs> you know what would have been cool. Two things this would have really sealed the deal for me. This should have been in Axis Chemicals, and Joker has a crowbar. Ah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> he does use a lead pipe in this one. Yeah. But, but he should have had a crowbar in Access Chemicals. And he, do you think he should have fell into the chemicals again? <laughs> but what that done that was only normal? <laughs> Turn <laughs> back the Jack Napier. Oh, no. But I don't know how that would have no. worked. But this definitely should have been Access Chemicals, you know, settle the score, you know, where yeah. it really started. Yeah, that's true, actually. Terry does fight quite dirty in this. Hmm. I mean, you think about it, he kills the Joker. Who, Terry? Yeah. I guess in a way he kind of does. I mean, it depends how you really look at it. I mean, Bruce deliberately tried to avoid killing the Joker. I know everybody said for years, why don't you just kill him? <laughs> but Batman never did. Bruce no. never did. But Terry... It's funny because in the show, even though Terry doesn't, how do I explain this? Terry doesn't actually like kill someone, quote unquote kill. He does take quite a few lives. Even if he doesn't do it like directly, directly yeah. he does still take partial credit for offing quite a few bad guys. It's like um, the end of season one when Bruce says that you were indirectly responsible for making Derek Powers into Blight and Terry took, was proud of it because good <laughs> oh, this is good the one thing you're not Batman uh, he mocks his origin here he goes, yeah. so let me get this straight you fell into a vat of chemicals got your skin bleached and became a villain we can get rough words of rodeo <laughs> cow yeah that's one thing you never saw the original Batman do was mocked the Joker. No. He never mocked him. Uh, Maybe once he did. Oh, no. You know the one with um, the Joker tries to bully that bloke? Joker's um, favour. Yeah. Yeah. And then the closest he got was that Batman was laughing at him. A little bit. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And um, in Mad Love... What, which, whichever one you go with really, graphic novel the episode mm. there was a where Batman made a snide dig he said uh, Harley came a lot closer than you ever did pudding. yeah <laughs> very snidely like pudding <laughs> ha ha 
Jeez. See, how does he know destroying that wouldn't have made Tim Drake a vegetable? That's true, actually. I mean, surely you would have thought Bruce would have explained to Terry that, be careful, you know, there's still a good man under there. So be careful. Yeah. Well, I'm not really sure how they could have defeated the Joker, really. Because he's technically still killing off Tim, in a way. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how they could have got around there. I suppose this was the only logical way you could do it, really. Fry the chip. But then if the chip's in his neck, which is part of his brain, as you say, you well, are... It can lead up to the brain, at least. It can yeah. lead up to the brain. And as you say, you are at high risk of making Tim into a vegetable. Even if Tim does survive, he's not going to be the same after. No. Yeah, this was quite a very unique way to defeat the Joker. Oh, do you know how this could have ended? I just realised. They could have somehow got the chip out of Tim's neck. And you know in the Joker one, the comics? Yeah. And then you have him, mm. um, Dennis Brower, take the chip, put it in his own neck, and he becomes the next Joker. That's a good point. So you could have like the chip make, you know, kind of like a ven venom thing from Spider-Man. Like, whoever has the chip in their neck becomes, becomes the Joker. Joker, yeah. So that's another thing as well, is to add to that. They should have had a scene in this movie where um, Tim's back in the Batcave for the first time, and oh, Bruce is definitely. getting the chip, and then Tim wakes up, and the first face he sees is Bruce Wayne. And there's Nana Harley. You know what I never questioned before, but I want to know who that cop is who opens the door for Harley. She's been in quite a lot of episodes, but they never she? really said who she was. Because what if she was like a future... Um, Renee Montoya. Or, or Bullock, yeah. Bullock's daughter. Or I guess granddaughter at this point. But yeah. Actually, 40 years, maybe daughter. Tim Drake looked like he lost a bit of weight. Yeah. Looks a lot more slimmer. <laughs> well, for, well, for that fight with Batman, I've, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, got a, uh, yeah, that's some yeah. workout fighting <laughs> Terry. Some oh, donuts nice, come out. <laughs> some nice line there. Tim giving his blessing. Yeah. yeah it's, it's nice. I think after, <clears throat> after all the big stuff we've had in this movie, you need scenes like this. Definitely. Yeah, this is a really good scene here. Still think we should have got Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson should have come at the end. Just so I heard what happened. Are you okay? Done. That's it. Or even like a load of flowers and the, the card says from DG. Dick. Yeah. DG, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is good this is kind of like in a way I know it's kind of like I'm, I don't know what do you think it's kind of like the passing of the torch officially because Bruce yeah. does kind of give his blessing here so this is why I believe it could be after the first episode it's uh, possible. Uh, I mean uh, first series not yeah, episode. it's possible it could be after season one yeah it just feels like it could be after season one because Terry's one. not really familiar with the Joker so I'm guessing it could be after season one Mm. Oh, this is epic. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music at the end. It goes all rocks it up and then it goes into... The do, 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 do. It's brilliant. Yeah. There oh, you have it. I always thought Beyond was like, set in November. It has like a winter's vibe to it. Yeah, I'm not really too sure what the... Um, how do I put it? The weather-wise, I mean, it's always like very dark. So unless Batman Beyond is set like in a very long winter time, could be. But they never mentioned Christmas. No, that's a good question. They never really referenced Christmas. Did they ever mention Halloween? Yeah, in the first episode, is that? Do you remember when Batman's in Gotham, and all of a sudden he goes, "Oh, it's not Halloween yet," or something. I was like, I'm just in time for fall then. Yeah. So I'm guessing it could be around that time could have been around autumn like yeah. September October time and uh, there concludes the only Batman Beyond animated movie yeah. hard to believe 20 years, 20 years. wow <sighs> do you think there'll be another one 
Well, one, one every 20 years. That would be insane. Well, I hope not. Well, one every 21 years. Oh, God, I hope not. Well, we'll just have to see, really. But, yeah, it's a fantastic movie. Anyone who's seen or hasn't seen it, buy it. Probably have got it already. But, Definitely. But it's, it's really good. So, yeah, that concludes our audio commentary for Batman Beyond Return of the Joker which came out October 19th 2020 years ago well yeah I know a long time so um, thanks for listening to us watching this classic movie thank you it's been a pleasure yes so uh, until next time take care everybody and stay safe and we will see you all next time toodles <laughs> toodles <laughs> and one final thing we would like to add before we officially wrap this up what would you add for an after credit scene for this movie anything you want to add i would probably have because they mentioned that the arkham has been moved to a new location what if you saw a new villain just look at the camera who could that be what that um, that kid who went to terry's high school possibly but i mean if you had to if you didn't have to link it into the series mm. i would say killer croc yeah, maybe or i'm not really sure who else you could have as a new villain or a new joker yeah i suppose the only one i could think of was that guy who went to terry's school yeah just see him sitting there in prison cell looking up at the camera or maybe mm. looking at the TV screen or something yeah so that could be a good after credit scene if they were going to do something like that I'll actually I think I know who exact I mean if, if you had to link it to the series you'd probably have um Terry's friend in juvie big time big time looking up at the skyline of Gotham skyline mm. I can imagine that being something they do yeah that's something you could do so anyway that's probably um what we would do for uh, an after credits scene you know what to do leave your thoughts and comments down below let us know what you thought of batsman beyond return of the joker and uh what were your first impressions of the movie when it came out so once again thanks for listening hope you've enjoyed us talking about this movie and we will see all of you next time so until then, take care and stay safe. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.